Good day and welcome back to the next part of the custom maps and polygons series which we are doing in Tableau. This is the second video, I uh, hope you enjoyed the first one um, but let's dive into where we are. So we've already looked at polygons and how polygons are drawn up together. We had some fun creating our own ones but now we will look at spatial files and their use in Tableau. Do also hang around, we have an additional video coming up as well. We will look at custom map, map backgrounds and trust me, that one is definitely not to be missed. But back to shape files. First we'll actually start with the Tableau geographical roles which have been defined. Now you might be fairly familiar with at least one of these. But these are typical, the city names, country names, provinces, uh, zip codes and postcodes, which are already predefined within Tableau and ready to be used. Once these are properly assigned as geographic roles within Tableau, Tableau will draw the maps perfectly given the correct information. Now you also see that um, Tableau caters for uh, latitude and longitude as well, so you can provide some custom geocoding. And in, in, in any case as well, we've also got airports, as well as some US specific information, such as US telephone area codes. Now using all of these geographic roles, we are able to create a couple of charts. Let's look at a couple. The first is a proportional symbol map, which is extremely useful if you want to direct the user's attention to a specific, specific part in the map using your own measures to highlight whether you would like to show, for instance, um, a high density or a high number of observations in a specific area, you can use the size of these um, symbols on the map as well as the color and a combination of that to provide your insight or draw the user's attention to a specific area. The point distribution map, very similar to the previous one, but when we do not change the size or the coloring, it is quite easy then to identify specific clusters on the map where the user might want to drill into and get some insights out of. Another useful one is the origin and destination map, which is quite nice, um, especially for something like flights or uh, journeys being taken, where you can define the start and the end point of a specific journey and be able to use the measures defined in your data to add some additional insights in there. As you can see, these were, for instance, delays in um, uh, arrivals of flights in the US. The flow map is also quite a handy one, and um, this is where you can actually show some movement using the uh, real-time uh, information around storms, for instance, where you can add the, sort of the storm strength, the speed at which it goes, and so forth, to visualize on a map and compare to other observations within your data. The one that you're very familiar with potentially as well is the field maps. Now, if you, you do remember our polygons, which we spoke about in the first video, and this is in essence just a bunch of polygons. Now these are already predefined within Tableau and as you can see the state of Texas being an irregular shape has a number of different points assigned which tells Tableau how to draw the specific shape of Texas. But what do we do if we don't have these ones identified? Now we know which are already pre-coded in Tableau, but there might be a need at times where we need to show our own visualization, our own uh, shapes on the maps. Now this is where spatial files come into play. Now uh, there's a couple of different versions of these, uh, each with their own use case, but um, we'll quickly browse through the possible ones that you might come across and focus on the ISRI shape file. But let's have a quick look. So we have map info tables identified by the .tab, .dat, and .map files, KML files, which would be the .kml files, and the GeoJSON files. Now, the ESRI shape file, which is the Environmental Systems Research Institute, they have provided a specific format, or um, which they supply data in, and this is something which now has carried on forward as well. And three of the files which are required in this package are the .shp files, which is the shape format, the shx, the shape format index, and the dbf file, the attribute format. Now, all of these, oh well, these might be supplemented with further additional information, as you'll see in the example that we'll look at shortly, but these three need to be there by default. Let's go to Tableau, enough theory for now. 
Okay, so what we'll do is, firstly, actually, let's have a look at the data we're working with. We have five, six dams, apologies, six dams in the Cape Town region in South Africa, where we've got the dam name and the capacity of the actual dam. Now, what we would like to do is to show these dams with the actual outlines on a map and show the capacity as well. So what we could do, we can quickly jump into the, um, also the file, let's just quickly see the files that have been supplied, the shape files. Now, you'll recall we've had a look at a couple of these, the DBF, the SHP, and the SHX file. In this case, the PRJ and the SHP XML files have also be, been supplied, and these are also required for the specific shape file or special files to be used. Now, these have been provided or these have been obtained from the South African Department of Water Affairs, and um, we will also include the link to the data in the description below. All right, let's jump into Tableau. Let's start off with the spatial file. So normally we would use a text file or an Excel file to join in Tableau, but this time we'll go to the spatial file. Now pretty straightforward, we just go into the folder and you'll see we can only select the .shp file as that is the, the starting point uh, for Tableau to interpret these files. We will just open it up and immediately you'll see that a number of uh, columns are being pulled through. For us most important would be the name, perhaps the X and Y coordinates, we can also see what kind of um, water body this is. This um, shape file actually only, not only contains dams, but also, um, as you can see, islands and natural water, um, ponds and so forth. But um, for us, for our purposes, we will do a quick filter in any case. Um, but you can also see um, at the end there with the ge geometry column that um, Tableau is seeing from the file that we've imported that we will be drawing polygons from these files, okay? So first thing we'll do is we'll actually just filter for the dams that we will be working with. So these are the six ones that we'll be looking at. So it's as straightforward as just adding in our data source a filter on the name, and we will just quickly run through them. Let's start off with them as hook. Next, we've got Steenbras. There's two of those. Let's see, so Steenbras lower and Steenbras upper. We'll also do full flay, right? and Tiavatas Clove and Berg River. This is just basically to tidy up our um, visualization. We don't want to show all of them. Um, in this case, let's just focus on the six. Yes, six of them, say so, okay. And there are the six that we are looking at. All right, while we are here, we might as well also import this um, Excel file with showing the capacity of these dams, since we don't have it in this file. So we will just create a connection to an Excel file and let us just go to the right folder. And this is the Cape Town dam capacity. There we go, six dams, six unique dams with capacity and we can just jump into our visualization. So now, how would we put this together? Now, you would know normally that you would define the um, yeah, your specific dimensions to as geographic roles. We don't need to do that. Seeing as we're using a spatial file, the Tableau has already identified the geometry column as a geographical role, and we've also got the latitude and longitude already. So we can just put this geometry into our visualization, and voila, as magic appears on our screen, you can see these are the six dams. Let's count them one, two, three, four, five, and six. There's two at the bottom here. Let's just show you that there are six. Let's put the name into label. And there they are. If we just scroll into the one at the bottom here, you will see, oh, my bad, let's just scroll to the bottom. You will see these are in fact two dams. Let's go back to our original view. Now, um, as I've mentioned earlier, we also have the capacities of these dams. So we can put this into our visualization, which is straightforward. Um, we've got a secondary data set over there and we just need to make sure that if we are using data blending that we are setting up the relationship correctly. So I won't take the automatic uh, assignment that was taken, we will um, identify them ourselves. So from the primary data source which is SA dams, we'll take the name and from secondary also dam name. Hit OK and the blend has been uh, completed and we can see there that our linking field is correct. Now it's as straightforward as putting our capacity into the visualization. Let's put it onto color actually. But we need to be careful. We don't want it as a sum. 
we're going to just going to change this to attribute. So we don't want to sum it up. The capacity can only appear once. And we'll put the capacity on label as well. And while we are here, let's quickly just make this a little bit bigger. Um, format our visualization a little bit more and just put mega liters at the end uh, so our users can properly see what we are trying to, to show on this map here over here. And those are our um, these are our, our, our dams with the proper outlines as you can see done perfectly using um, a polygon drawn out onto the map. Now that was a bit fun wasn't it? And that is our map perfectly drawn with the correct polygons and um, using yeah as you can see customized um, shape files and now the world is your oyster you can literally take any shape files and put it into tableau as you wish for your own visualizations hope you enjoyed this video please do stay tuned for the third installment in this series you will not be disappointed and i will show you how to take this boring visualization right up there to the next level. Until the next video, see you then.